Hi, it's the MLM for the Soul Channel. I do have a new topic for today. Before I begin, I just would like to say, may the words and expressions of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of my heart find favor and acceptance before you, Hashem. And some people I thank you have inspired me. I hope they can inspire you as well. And I will have links both to their sites. They are Rabbi Yossi Mizri. Rahi, excuse me, Rabbi Eli Mensur, Melon Anava, Rabbi Uval Ovadia, Rabbi Daniel Asser, um, uh, Rabbi uh, uh, David Ashir, and Rabbi Yaron Reuven. As well, if you've never checked out this channel before, I will have a link below to my first video, which explains what MLM for the soul means, what it stands for, what I'm doing. So this is for the upcoming Parsha, Parsha Kedoshim. And this is again from the weekly Parsha Insights by Rabbi Eli Mansur, and I call this the correction of Adam Harishon's sin. So the Torah in Parash HaKadoshim presents the command of Orla, which is forbidding uh, partaking of the fruit of a tree for the first three years after it is planted. The Zohar explains that Hashem forbade eating a tree's fruit for the first three years because during the period the fruit contains tumah, which is impurity. In Hashem's great love for the Jewish people, He wants to keep us away from impurity. And so He commanded us to refrain from fruit, fruits that are produced by a tree during its first three years, when the fruit is, quote, a contam is contaminated by tumah. So the Panim Yafot, which is Rabbi Pinchas Halevi Horowitz, explains that the source of this impurity is the, quote, sin committed by the ground at the time of the world's creation. The Midrash teaches that Hashem intended for the ground to produce trees that were flavorful in their entirety, even in the bark. The ground violated Hashem's command by producing trees that bore tasty fruit but were otherwise tasteless. So the Panim Yafot adds that since the ground committed this sin, Adam, who was created from the ground, ended up violating Hashem's command as well. And for this reason, in response to Adam's sin of partaking of the forbidden fruit, Hashem not only punished mankind, but also cursed the ground, which it says in Gracious 3.17, Arura Ha'adama. <laughs> Excuse me. So the ground was cursed for its role in Adam's sin, for having violated Hashem's command, which resulted in Adam violating Hashem's command. So due to this curse, the fruit of new trees are impure, and it takes three years for this impurity to be eliminated. Hence, as the Zohar writes, Hashem forbade partaking of a tree's fruit during its first three years. Because the fruit during this time is contaminated as a result of the curse which Hashem pronounced on the ground in the wake of Adam's sin. So this concept has been explained further on the basis of a different passage of the Zohar, explaining the practice to recite each night before Arvid, which is Mar, the last, um, the prayer of the, of the night, uh, or of the evening, of the three prayers that you say. Um, so the verse is Vehu Rachum Yechaper Avon Velo Yashchit. This verse, the Zohar writes, includes the word Yashchit Apo and Hamchamato, which refers to three harmful spirits that are called Mashchit Af and Chema. We recite this verse each night in order to neutralize it, as it were, uh, these threatening forces, so they do not cause us harm. So just so you know, women don't usually pray the last the last prayer of the evening. A lot of times. Women just say uh, Shacharit, the morning prayer, and then Mincha, the afternoon, or at least one of them. Okay, just so you know. Um, so this verse is not recited on the Shabbat, as these forces are powerless on the Shabbat. Uh, now the Megali Amukos, which is Rav Nata Nata Shapiro, writes in Parshas Vayishlach, that these three forces, Mashchit, Af, and Chema, are the spirits that take a person's life when his time comes to depart from this world. It emerges then that these three forces came into being as a result of Adam's sin which introduced death into the world. If this is the case, then we can easily understand why, as the Zohar teaches, it takes three years for a tree to lose its impurity. The source of this impurity is Adam's sin of the forbidden fruit, which brought the three harmful spirits into the world. The power of each spirit is overcome in one year, such that it takes three years for the impure forces to be entirely overcome. This explains an otherwise baffling comment of the Midrash of Yikor Rabba, Revelant to the prohibition of Orla, the Midrash cites Rabbi Yehuda ben Pazi as explaining, He will remove the earth from your eyes, Adam Harishon. You were unable to obey your command one, one hour, and your children wait the three years of Orla. It appears at first glance that Rabbi Yehuda ben Pazi is taunting Adam, ridiculing him for failing to obey the command not to partake of the forbidden fruit, noting that the Jewish people faithfully observe the command of Orla and refrain from a tree's produce in its first three years. But why would Rabbi Yehuda ben Pazi want to taunt Adam? Furthermore, the Midrash concludes that Rabbi Yehuda ben Pazi's uncle, Bar Kapara, heard this remark whereupon he enthusiastically praised his nephew's teaching. What was so profound about Rabbi Yehuda's statement? This question has been answered in light of the connection between the law of Arla and Adam's sin in Gan Eden developed above. So the Midrash in Shemos Rabbah comments that Adam, quote, did not withstand his test for three hours. The commentators explain this to mean that the command to refrain from the forbidden tree 
was intended to be only temporary. This command, as the Gemara in Sanhedrin 38b teaches, was given at the ninth hour of the day of Adam's creation, and the commentators add it was intended to apply only for the next three hours, until the onset of Shabbat. If so, then we understand the connection between Arla and Adam's sin on a deeper level. In order to correct the mistake by Adam, we f who failed to abstain from the forbidden tree for three hours, we abstain from the fruit of a newly planted tree for three years. This then is the meaning of Rabbi Huda ben Pazi's proclamation. He was not expressing disdain for Adam, but rather drawing attention to the fact that Adam's descendants are doing what they can to correct his mistake. He was expressing his wish that Adam could see how his descendants, the Jewish people, are bringing about the rectification of his grave mistake by refraining from, the trees, from a tree's fruit for his first three years, thereby reversing the effects of his tragic failure to abstain from the forbidden tree for three years. And I hope and pray that we all merit to live and see the coming of Mashiach, speedily in our days and the rebuilding of our final and everlasting Beit HaMegish. Amen, and thanks for watching.